this comfortable life that I had aspired to the whole time. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to have I don't want to need this. I don't need that. And I, I just saw my life 20 years from now on a comfort track and being comfortable, seeing my patients and um, staying in that little zone and having a nice little comfortable life. And it's breaking out of that, uh, which is the scary part, right? Getting outside mm-hmm, of your mm-hmm, comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where it's the most exciting. This is the Gold Medal Mindset, where we bring you all things winning in business, sport, and life. I'm Dr. Jason Richardson, pro BMX world champion and Pan Am Games gold medalist. Now I'm a professional speaker, author, and winning mindset coach. Thanks for joining in. Get ready to mind for gold as we challenge your perception to change your results. Gold Medal Mindset is brought to you courtesy of IPD Seminars, motivating the motivated with a six-hour intensive training from leaders in business, sport, and life. Make an impact, live with purpose, and fulfill your destiny. Learn the mindset and best practices to crush any limit. Visit IPDSeminars.com for more information. People, we are back with the gold medal mindset and as you know you know what i'm gonna say i'm super excited to have this guest actually he's not even a guest you guys he's not even a guest (laughs) he he's family it's kind of like when you're watching your favorite marvel tv show on netflix and they do those crossover episodes that's who this guy is He's got his own superpowers. He's an MD. He's an MPA, MBA, excuse me. He's getting his master's in public health, I believe. Oh, gosh. And oh, gosh. he just finished his new book, Persist. Welcome back, Mr. Dr. Clarence M. Lee Jr. Wow. Wow. Thanks, Jay. Oh, man. It's always a good time to hang out, man. Um, well, that's You did that, right? I mean, I, don't, I wasn't. I, just, I didn't make it up. <laughs> no, you did not. It just seems, seems that you know, it's, it's a bunch. I, I try to stay active and, and bring value and uh, continue to grow myself as well. So um, try to try to uh, walk what I talk. Good, good, and that's that's exactly that's exactly why you will be. And you know, we still have to have you guest host guest host the show because you know i do step out on those on those international trips it's hard to keep up so we'll have you do that okay but i want to talk about two things in in particular i want to first talk about this i want to set this up for the for the audience i want to talk about your book persist i want to talk about your book persist and then i want to talk about how your book leads into um the the events the IPD, yes. Impact, Purpose, and Destiny, uh, which I've been a part of both events. So I'm going to go three for three. I'll be in Philly September 3rd at, at Impact, Purpose, and Destiny, uh, awesome. revving it up, bringing yes. home the the gold medal mindset set for the championship life. But I want to talk about how – I want to talk about Persist. I want to talk about IPD and um, and really – basically let you take over this show right now so tell us about the book tell us where people can get it tell us what they're going to get out of it xyz one two three go awesome all right this will be i'll I'll try to make it quick so it won't be just a monologue but um yeah impact purpose and destiny um september 23rd so i'll talk about that next um but first yeah the book persist how to beat the things that make us quit so the the inspiration for this book kind of came from um, conversations I had with people as I was growing up, they would always tell me about what they were passionate about. They would say, oh, yeah, when I was younger, I was really into blah, blah, blah. OK, so that'd be the first piece of the conversation. And then like clockwork, the second piece of the conversation would be. But, you know. Now, air quotes, inner excuse. Mm-hmm. But, you know, such and such happened. And, I, you know, I wasn't able to live my dream in that. But I ended up doing, and then the last piece was C, their current compromise of a life. Um, I'm doing this now because of that, right? And so that was the conversation I got from the majority of people. I'm talking about 90% of the people. Um, It was very rare for me to actually run into somebody and for them to actually admit to me and say, I am living my dream. Right. But it was hard to reconcile that with most of the messaging that I got. So even in school, even in books that I read, um, you know, documentaries, movies, 
everybody kept saying, you can live your dreams. You can do what you want to do with your life. Until, but that they, wasn't, until they tell you you can't, right? <laughs> right, right. And, and But that wasn't really – I wasn't seeing it, okay? And so, um, you know, I just I, – I, I, that's the bad – backdrop of why I wrote Persist. So the, the, the subtitle is How to Beat the Things That Make Us Quit. So as I started to lay out the book, I looked at the top 10 excuses people gave me um, on why they weren't living their dreams. And each each chapter, I'm going in on why that's a lie, why it's an excuse. And here are some of the things, if you're struggling with this specific excuse, here are some of the exercises that you can do to overcome that. Nice. Um, so that that's persist in a nutshell, man. It's for it's it's not for people that don't have a vision. So if you don't know where you're trying to go, if you don't have something that you're trying to get to, if you don't have something that you're trying to or that you want to persist in getting, it's helpful for you. So I don't really work like here to find your purpose and this is how to figure out what you want to persist for. I don't discuss that. I'm pretty much going after people that know what they want. They're just trying to figure out how to keep going because it isn't coming as quickly as they want. Or struggling getting it. And, and Oh, struggling getting it, yeah. yeah. So what chapter was it that you referenced my book? <laughs> so I, I, I referenced your book when I was exploring this concept of being one of many best. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I heard you say, which I had never heard it and I read it, uh, and it's all BS, is that I could be the best too. And that concept was kind of foreign to me because as a competitor, you, you, you think that there's only one person at the top, but the way you broke it down with, oh, there's a hall of fame. Like, and I'm like, wow, that makes so much sense. There's, there's an elite class. There's a class that you can be a part of by being the best. Yeah, no right? sense of being no sense of being in a club all by yourself. Right, right. And so um yeah, so I I, I talked about that um in in the book, you know, exploring kind of that concept of you being the best too and um when when it when it evolves around timing. So a lot of people, you know, that's one of the excuses, you know, um it's not the right time or my timing was off or I missed my window. So, you know, especially in athletics, um, even sometimes in business, even in corporate America, people will say, oh, well, uh, I miss my writing window or I miss my dancing window or I miss my performing window. Right. Mm -hmm. Excuse about based in time or, you know, Right now, there's this guy and he's been in the company for a couple years. And, you know, the timing is just not right for me to get that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. Right. Um, or th this person brought the product to market to they beat me to market. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they're the first people that got like I can't have a me too product. Right. And so I just kind of explore this concept of you don't necessarily have to be the only one. Dude. I have you just it's so crazy that you brought that up and and thanks for thanks for the book plug. I'm um, just yes, absolutely. Se selfish book plug. Um no, I ha was having a conversation about this with somebody uh the other day and uh, about first to market. And uh. there are many times uh even in my sport as an athlete, I was one of the first people to to use a certain product or wear a certain, you know, protective device. Um, and then, and, and I quite honestly didn't get the credit for it because the next guy took it and blew it out the water. And, and that was such a great lesson for me. And we see it now. We see it with Lyft and Uber, right? I think Lyft was uh -huh. first and Uber's right. like, okay, thank you for that. Right. Boom! Right, and you yep. see it with so in so many different spaces and places. So a lot of times it's not first to get to market. Sometimes it's the first, or not even the first, but the best, yep. one of the best to bring it to more people. Right, to add more, add more value to more people. So I'm add glad you value. brought that up. Yeah, and it, and and that's and I think that takes a lot of pressure off of people too because um you know with with the timing piece with the timing excuse where you feeling like it has to be the right time or the perfect time you know that just doesn't exist and so if somebody is you know is out there is listening to this podcast like you know the timing's not right for me to do this or you know it's just not the right time 
you, 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 you have to honestly dig deep and say, is that just an excuse that's getting me off of the hook right now for me not to take action? Because I honestly believe right now is the most important time to take action if you feel passionate or driven to do something. There's no reason to wait. And so um, don't worry about being the only best. You could be the best, too. And there's many best. Right. That's what I love about that. Right. Because, well, you know, what if in and out had been like, well, you know, there's a McDonald's already <laughs> or, you know, what if Burger yeah. King had been like, yeah, well, there's an in and out or it, it, there's already a social media well, Instagram. Well, there's already Facebook, you know, so. Um, yeah, so I, I just, you know, just challenge, just challenging people that, you know, concerning timing, you can be one of the best as well. Cool. So what is your, I mean, what's your favorite of all the excuses? What, yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite? Uh, I, the, the, my favorite and probably the most invasive, which was the last chapter that I wrote, which I didn't even, I, I didn't have this chapter originally in the in the outline is uh it's comfort man and it's honestly to to be honest with you it's the one that i when i'm when i was writing the book it's the one that i was struggling with the most so it was Mm. the kind of the most uh kind of self self self-healing one to write that to write about how i was feeling and that was comfort being comfortable um and so just to you know just to tell you where, where i was at the time of the book it's like I I had built this comfortable life being a physician, you know, seeing patients the majority of the time, making a decent amount of money uh, for, you know, average, you know, person standards, um, you know, living a comfortable life, not really needing a lot of things. And it was the very that very comfort which was keeping me from pushing toward what I knew I was meant to do. So there was this internal struggle. And, you know, for most people, it could be or for a person listening. It could be, hey, you're in this comfortable job. You've got a lifestyle that you're Mm -hmm. used to Mm -hmm. now. You have a family that you care for now. But, man, I really don't like what I'm doing. Or I really wish I had more time to do what I was really passionate about. And so that's where I found myself and it was this comfort, this comfortable life that I had aspired to the whole time. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to have I don't want to need this. I don't need that. And I, I just saw my life 20 years from now on a comfort track and being comfortable, seeing my patients and um, staying in that little zone and having a nice little comfortable life. And it's breaking out of that, uh, which is the scary part. Right. Getting outside mm-hmm, of your mm-hmm, comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where it's the most exciting. And so uh, the comfort one is is just writing about how often are you living on the edge? How often are you pushing your comfort limit? How often are you getting outside of your comfort zone and growing as an individual? And is the life that you've created for yourself right now, is that very life the thing that is holding you from taking the next step, right? The next progression in your life. Is is your comfortable life the very thing that's holding you back? Man, okay. So, how many people, in your opinion, really want what they say they want? Because, because it's my opinion <laughs> that, because that's like when people see me, that's my gut check question. It's like, all right, if you, I mean, do we really want it? Are we really signing up to play? Are we really suiting up? Or is it just, it would be nice if I harp on yes. that a lot because otherwise, and you know, you, you're in touch with a lot of people just like I am. We're in the work, you know, we, we work with people and we, we speak yep. to a lot of people. So yep. for me, it's like, look, you don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I don't mean, and I don't mean that like you're smart you, yeah, you right. have talents like you really like it. Let it go. Like if it's going to be shame and guilt and killing yourself because there's this thing that you want and you're not doing it like, you know, like I'm Morpheus, you know, like, hey, man, <laughs> before you take this pill, recognize right. you can go back to your comfortable life. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be that way. So in your opinion, how many people are really about it? A uh, very, very small percentage. Um, I, I, I think we've all got our scripted responses and our talking points when we're having these conversations. But 
to actually put what it takes on the line. I think very few people are willing to take the risk, get outside of their comfort zone and do what is necessary to, um, to, you know, sometimes it's going into a different field or to live their dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My, my hope and my dream, my prayer for people is that they could realize that they're capable of living their dream. Now it's not, it's, it's, now listen, (laughs) it's not going to be the easiest route, right? It's probably going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to do. It's going to require the most of you ever, right? Um, it's going to give you the most resistance, but, um, you know, you, you're capable of living your dream. So, you know, my, my, my hope is, is to, to bring more dream livers, to uh to the world but yeah most folks no nah, they're not they're 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 not all in man Woo. so how do you deal with the conversion so and and i think um the the list list uh, this is how i converted myself i'll there tell you go. that so be, be vulnerable be vulnerable on this this is how i converted myself and uh the conversion happened within me is when i looked to twofold when I looked into the future for my life and I envisioned me no longer being here and then asking myself, when I'm about to die, did I absolutely do everything in my power to live the life that I wanted to live? And when I contemplated that, I said, well, if I don't go all in step out on this limb um i'm gonna get to the end of my life and i'm gonna regret not having done it so that was the first piece and then the second piece was i'm I'm a dad of three i've got three children and the second piece was when i look my kid and i look my son in his eye and i say hey buddy you can do anything you want in life you can live (laughs) your dream in life and then for me not to be doing that myself how can I honestly look him in the eye with all sincerity and say he can do it if I'm not the first example of that, right? Um, and so it was just kind of contemplating and really going deep on those two things. And I said, man, you know, I owe it to myself. You know, I owe it to God who gave me the gifts. And I owe it to my children to be that first example of walking the walk. Yeah, that's that's a huge leadership lesson. I was actually talking to a client just today about that and where, um, and oddly enough, they were beating themselves over, you know, just their training and working out and, and kind of falling short of a, of a fitness standard that they, that they once had. And I was like, you're not owning that standard. You're not owning that standard. And so now, right. And and you've been flopping over that and wishy-washy about that and beating yourself up over over that shame guilt all this other stuff and now there's a conflict at work and you have to go talk to this person and you and you're you you're avoiding that conflict and i can tell you whether you whether you yell at him (laughs) or take him out for a beer and talk to him about it it it's it's gonna you know that energy of that of that shame and guilt and you not living in your alignment your kind of in your conviction, in your truth, right. that's it, it's only going to go so far. You're going to see a change for a couple of days, but he's going to look at you and just be like, "Eh, uh, okay, thanks, yeah, I'll try." You know, versus like if you're that dude who really was going that extra five, ten percent, even two percent every day, one, you wouldn't have any qualms about approaching that person at work and 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 having the conversation. And two, when you said it, it would be coming from a totally different place, regardless right. of how you deliver it. And that would that that person will be like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll okay, yes, sir, <laughs> you know, right? And and so it's so funny how that so that you brought that up with, with your kid. It's like, because you're you wouldn't be lying if you said you could do anything you want. Right. You wouldn't be lying, right. but your kids gonna be like, wait, I just saw you, like, yep. say yep. you couldn't do this because your <laughs> schedule said, you know, and the, mm-hmm. the kids put that together real quick. So real quick. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I, I, um, you know, and, and everybody's not parents. So that's, I mean, that's not, that, that's not going to resonate with anybody, but at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, everybody has gifts and everybody's supposed to bring something to the world. The world ends up missing out. If you don't bring what you're supposed to bring to the world, everybody's not talented in the areas where you're talented. Don't waste those talents. You know, and, and, you know, 
I, the guy that I like right now, um, two guys that I've really been watching, uh, Elon Musk and uh, uh, Richard Branson, these guys just kind of mm-hmm. live this, um, you know, going into these industries where they don't have the, the technical expertise, but they have visions. They are able to put teams together and make absolutely happy. And I just think it's beautiful to watch them and the way that people look at the way that they think and say, oh, wow, these guys are geniuses. And it's, I don't think it's genius. I, I think that it's a, a resolve and a commitment um, to making things happen that they believe in. No, you know what I mean? They're I, smart. I hear you. I hear you. But And I think what happens is for for a lot of people, they have to be geniuses because that's the only way they can explain the dissonance that they're experiencing themselves. Right? This guy must be a genius yep. Yep. to do this. I'm not a genius, therefore it's okay for me to be comfortable because I'm not a genius anyway. Right? right. That's the that's a genius uh that's a genius mogul mindset. Actually, we should do a training. Genius mogul mindset. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but no. but but that's how that's how we humans explain right things that you know, we don't quite understand or or that we know that are uh, that we are deficient in, right? Cuz we're Yeah, yeah. It's a it's it's an easy way to make the separation the the grit and tenacity and and resilience that is required to do those things and that's and that's really what the book is about man it's really about how you view things that are holding you back um, and kind of changing your mindset around some of these excuses or some of these reasons why or that you know things that you've convinced yourself are true with why you have now been okay with compromising. You know, and I, I just don't think you have to compromise for your entire life. Now, it, you know, I always say if you're going to compromise on something, well, compromise by taking the burger because they didn't have the the, 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 the ketchup and the mustard. OK, fine. Just give it to me with the ketchup. Right. OK, if you want to compromise, go ahead and make that compromise, you know, um, but don't compromise on the trajectory of your entire life. And, uh, you know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, want to admit it or not, a lot of people have done just that. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I think we we still, we humans still kind of do. Uh, let's switch gears because I, th- I, I, well, not even switch gears. I really think talking about persist, the book, um, leads perfectly into IPD, impact, purpose, and destiny. So yeah. the yes, the impotence for those seminars will be in Philly, September twenty third. Impact, purpose, and destiny. Um. What, what's the brainchild behind that? What's the reasoning behind that? What do you want? I mean, because those are big words: impact, purpose, destiny. I mean that that could almost scare certain people away. And I and I know you, so I know that's a filter of sorts. By <laughs> right, you want you. It's going to attract those people who want to make an impact, who want purpose, and want to fulfill a destiny. But those are big words. Yeah, yeah. So the the idea with with IPD is, um, and, it, and it's threefold. And I can go through each one of the the um, each one of the, those words there. But number one is just to understand that you know we're created to make an impact, and I think most people will agree. If uh, you know, if I ask them, you know, you know, would you like to make an impact in the job that you're at, or do you want to, you know, be able to tangibly see? the effects that are coming because of your life and because of your work. Most people would agree with that. Um, you know, and I, I, so it's, it's, it's understanding that if you're going to focus on creating something in your life, you know, one, you have to realize how you can make an impact because if you don't see how you're making an impact, you're going to lose motivation. So that's the impact piece. Mm-hmm. So we take people through this idea of understanding where they are, mo- where they have the most potential in making an impact in the world. And then the second piece, the biggest piece is this, you know, it's, it's a buzzword, but it's not a buzzword. It's, it's purpose, right? Um, if you don't spend time in your day contemplating your purpose, why you're actually here, why are you alive, why are you breathing, what are you supposed to bring to the world, um, I, I feel like you could live a, a shadow life. So, you know, I, I challenge people with how they can make impact. Give them some time and, and free mental space to really contemplate their purpose, their highest meaning for them in their existence. And then, hey, let's map out that destiny that you want to create for your life. Uh, let's map out where you want to go. Let's map out how you're going to get there. Um, and 
that bounce about other people that are committed uh, to make an impact, live in purpose, and, and creating a destiny that they want. And so IPD is 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 a, is a all day, you know, one day intensive training where we kind of go through, bring in some of the best like yourself. Thank you. Um, when it when it comes to peak performance, when it comes to time management, when it comes to understanding your physiology, um, goal setting, and we talk about all those things. Right. In a in a really fun, amazing, I mean, lights, cameras, action, um, you know, there'll be breakout sessions. There'll be lots of time to celebrate, lots of music, lots of energy. Um, but just kind of give people a, a sanctuary, if you will, uh, to level up their energy, go all in on their vision and uh, and re-energize themselves and blast them into the world. That's that's IPD right there. Yeah. And leave with some real concrete concrete to do's when they leave there it's not like it's not like they're just going to get a pat on the back and a kick in the butt and be like yeah i'm ready they'll be more than just ready they will literally have like what are you you know a to-do list for the next 24 to 48 hours that they can act on you know yesterday absolutely so we we want we want people to have tangible takeaways okay so this is just a rah-rah hype up uh Get excited. Um, There's also time to share tactics, you know, things that have worked. You know, put people in, in, in front of your presenters that have had success in these areas. What's worked for them? Um, well, what are some of their routines and how they've gotten the results? So, yeah, it's absolutely because, I, I mean, I'm a nuts and bolts guy. You know, I, I think you got to have the high level. You, you have to have the high level motivation. You have to have the high level philosophy in the right place. But if you lack where you lack in tactics, you're going to lack in execution. So at the end of the day, it, it's all about executing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, mm -hmm. at, at IPD, we give you the high level, but then we also give you the tactics, you know, the day to day. The trenches. Time management. The trenches. Yeah, <laughs> how, how you're going to get it done. So, so who should come, right? So I'm in Jersey. I'm in Philly. I'm in New York. I'm in the tri-state area. Uh, who, who do we want at IPD? Obviously, any, anybody who picks up a persist book is interested in that is qualified for sure is definitely ipd ready absolutely if you got some if you got somewhere that you're trying to go and you, you know where you where you want to go uh, um you, you got to definitely have a vision but you know specifically who's resonated the message has resonated most with entrepreneurs so people that have a business mindset people that are trying to bring a business product to the world and self-starters so we're talking about people that work on either missions or people that are have to actually produce something to make money. So if you're sitting in, if you're sitting hitting the clock uh, and you're getting paid and it's not on performance, um, then it, it, this might be the video. But if you've got a vision of where you say, oh, I want to be in that CEO suite or I want to be in the C suite, we IPD can help you get or there. I want to take my team. Yeah, I want to take my team to the next level. I want to. I want to win the vacation that, that the company's giving away. Um, yeah. Right. So entrepreneur, intrapreneur is what I'm hearing. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so th that's kind of the main, the main group, um, just entrepreneurs, self-starters, uh, you know, folks that have a vision that are trying to get there, just level up, man. I think the, the easiest way is level up. If you are, are committed to leveling up, your life, taking your life to the next level, you know that there is some other place that you can get to. IPD is where you where 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 you need to be. Boom. There you go. It's like that, people. So <laughs> hey man, I you should see that's what I'm saying. You should just host the show every now and then because sometimes when you talk, I'm like I'm I'm done. I, what what am I supposed to say? <laughs> it's just done. Just, right, done. just give it. This is good. So, okay. So, where can they go to get the tickets? How do they register? Let's let's get some nuts and bolts down. Okay. Uh, so, we, yeah, because we want to knock this out of the park, and yeah. we want and we want the and we want people to leave IPD like just ready to just crack open the globe. Right. So, IPD Impact Purpose and Destiny. You can go to ipdseminars.com um, to to register. We're going to actually extend the early bird registration um, for another two weeks. So. August 31st, we'll close out the early bird registration. Uh, so you can go and register at IPDseminars.com. we got a couple um, couple intro videos on there so you can get a better feel. We've got a lineup for some of the speakers. 
I've just added a speaker, a TEDx speaker that's coming, um, Tiffany Sutherland. She's coming. She's local in Philly. She's a lawyer. She's coming. Uh, just added her. So we're going to have Sean Anthony, Greg Fredericks, Jay Rich, myself. Um, so it's, the panel is, is, is amazing, man. So, you know, it's Philadelphia. So if you're in the, you know, tri-state area, Jersey, New York, Baltimore, Philly, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, those are the folks that are going to be able to get there easily. But obviously, you know, if you're traveling, um, and yeah, man, yeah, we're just, we're just excited, ready to bring the energy. I'll just tell folks, you know, um, it's going to be a day of challenges. So it's going to be a day that's, that's going to absolutely challenge you. You're you're not going to attend IPD. And uh, not be challenged. So, you know, I, I think, I believe wholeheartedly and, you know, challenging people, helping them go deep and then, and then helping them move forward. So just come, come ready to get challenged, come ready to network with some, some other fast chargers, high speed people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, even, even find mastermind groups and bounce ideas off of, off of other motivated folks. It's just, like I said, just getting that, getting that sanctuary, getting in a place where the, the energy is lifted. You're going to feel the energy when you, when you enter that room, I guarantee you, you will feel the energy. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just going g- to give you that space. Yeah. It's, and, and, you know, for people listening, this is my third one. Uh, I love it. I love doing it. I love being a part of it. And, uh, and and it to watch it evolve and and to not only that but just see when people you know the way people walk in and the swagger when they walk out um that's that's probably the most fun for me and and truthfully you know watching the like being in touch with with people who have, who have attended these who have attended these IPDs um you know both both in Sacramento and San Diego um it's still in touch and and they're you know, there's, they send me emails, they send me texts, uh, they've become coaching clients, uh, and just, just seeing their wins, like they're putting numbers on the board. And, and that's the, that's the cool thing. It's, it's really, you know, anything you want and you can make your life anything you want it to be. And that's, that's what we're here to help people do. So with that, Dr. Lee, man, um, I appreciate your time. What else do you have for the people? What's the word? Absolutely, man. I always, I always, uh, I always enjoy coming on and, uh, and you know, you giving me an opportunity to, to encourage people. Um, that, uh, that's what I'm on this earth to do. Uh, I just, uh, I, I, I'll share this. I just, I just spoke at uh, uh, Sacramento State uh, this this morning. Um, I, I spoke to their uh, MLK Scholars Program, which was awesome. So. Uh, Students, I love student engagement. I just uh, I spoke to them today, and um, I, I'll tell you what. I, I feel like there is an epidemic um, of of uh, folks that 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 need encouragement. I'll just say that mm-hmm. you know this this idea of encouraging others i think in some settings has become foreign and uh you know people will disguise uh, the, well, I'll, I'll say this they'll, they'll disguise their pessimism um by 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 saying they're being realistic or mm. saying that they're, they're being practical and um i you know i i just i'm going full steam head on against that messaging thank you um thank because you. you know that that's just ends up ends up being a compromising line so i just you know i just encourage folks that if you if you are not surrounding yourself with people that are encouraging you that are lifting you up that are that are pushing you to bring the best out of you then you you got you got to surround yourself with different people and you have to be intentional about doing that and so that means going to conferences you know that means joining groups that means reading books joining masterminds right that means getting in the room so that you can surround yourself with people that are going to take you to the next level because look here's the truth man it's like it, it, you 
this is, I, I've heard it put this way. You're the average of the five people you spend most of your time with, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to take yourself up and you, you cannot be the smartest, uh, most successful, um, most admired person in every room that you're in. If you are, then that's that's the the fast trip trip that you're going to stay where you're at, right? The fast track to mediocrity and, and not going anywhere. So, you know, I, I would just encourage people to just to make sure you're surrounding yourself with folks that are going to lift you up, folks that are going to push you, folks that are going to challenge you, folks that aren't going to take your crap. <laughs> there you, <laughs> you go. Know? There you go. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, that, that's it, man. Folks that have challenged that belief system. Yes, sir. All right. Well, with that said, man, I will let you get back to your fine day where you are i know you like you said you have three children so i'll let you get back to them and all of the stuff that you're doing i know you're i know you're on a speaking tour of sorts you'll be traveling a lot so i do appreciate your time and checking us out on the gold medal mindset and uh yeah man we'll see you in a few weeks yeah sounds good if folks want to learn more about persist book um you can uh you can just go to clarence lee jr forward slash persist I've got some bonuses I'm going to be giving out for folks that order on Amazon and give me a review. This Amazon review, man, is is, is the credibility in the marketplace. So I'm trying to entice people to give me a review. Uh, if you give me a review and, and uh, get it on Amazon, give me an honest review. And uh, I've got I've got a uh, I've got a companion video course uh, on persistence where I go a little deeper on each chapter. Um, and I've got a private Facebook group of persisters. Folks nice. that are joining this persistence movement, um, where I'm going to be doing um, live training monthly on that. So you you buy the book, give me a review. I'll get you I'll get you in the video course and uh, join the group. Boom. I want. Can I join the group? Can I, go, I want to get in the group. You, you, you're in, man. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I'm a persister. I'm a persister. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for taking the time to mine for gold on the Gold Medal Mindset Podcast. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter at RealDrJRich or on the web at DrJasonRichardson.com. That's DrJasonRichardson.com. Take care and have a great day. Gold Medal Mindset is brought to you courtesy of IPD Seminars. Make an impact live with purpose, and fulfill your destiny. Learn the mindset and best practices to crush any limit. Visit ipdseminars.com for more information.